I'm Daniel Richler. I was born in London, England in 1956. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but presently the editor-in-chief of Book Television. I have this idea of an endless lunch, a lunch with friends, al fresco, that is so boozy, so chatty, so wonderfully intimate that it goes on all afternoon. The waiters have even been drawn into the conversation and they don't resent the fact that the restaurant is being kept open all day and they're laying the tables for supper and we order a fresh. And it continues for another meal's worth of time. To be perfectly selfish, uh, my greatest fear is of uh, a long, slow death by torture. The intense sadism humans' neighbors are capable of meeting out at the drop of a, of a flag it disgusts and terrifies me, and I wouldn't trust my neighbors. <laughs> Peace to them. Uh, <laughs> if a civil war broke out in Canada, so I'm internally, eternally grateful that I'm living in a, in a peaceable time in this country. The first person who jumps to mind is my late dad, Mordecai, Mordecai Richler. Uh, he was, in many respects, a, a moral compass, uh, a, a, a frightening person, an imposing person, but also uh, an inspiring one, and, and one who I, I miss really every day. He lived the life he wanted to. He called his own shots. Now, as Bob Dylan once cannily observed, everybody got to serve somebody, but he didn't. What I really, really hate in myself, what I really despise, is self-loathing. I don't like it when people act without any sense of precedent or context. I think the most overrated virtue is, is telling the truth. We're always encouraged, like George Washington, you know, to admit we chopped down the ter cherry tree. He never chopped down a cherry tree, by the way. Um, that's a total myth. But uh, there are many situations in life where it's more expedient, uh, more helpful, uh, and in a way more honest to lie. I never ever lie. I never lie. And if you don't believe me, <laughs> the truth of the matter is uh, that there was a, a play by, by uh, the playwright Ibsen, The Wild Duck, uh, which was really a lot about lying. Ibsen believed that we all live according to a system of a, what he called the life lie. So there are many situations where people want to know, am I fat? Am I beautiful? <laughs> Aren't I talented? You tell them yes, even if you don't believe it's true. It makes them happier. The world goes around more easily. Musicianship. I cannot play for beans. I have uh, what's called perfect pitch, but apparently that's a very little musical advantage at all, especially if you have no rhythm. So I spent most of my life wishing I could play and I, I cannot play. I don't ever fall into the trap of saying I was happiest 10 years ago or when I was 25 or uh, when I was married to the first of 13 wives. You know, it, it, it doesn't really work that way for me. I'm always looking ahead to make things better. So when was I the most happiest? Uh, 10 years from now when I'm living somewhere doing something marvelous. I identify with uh, some poor bastard in the rank and file of the British army or the French army fighting at Agincourt, you know, in the 15th century. Uh, or which bloodthirsty century was it when knights in armor roamed around the burning countryside like terrible worms in iron cocoons? It was a sadistic and awful time and I would have been a victim of it. I have this haunting vision with smoke on the horizon, burning villages and all the rest of, of just being one of those masses that were, that were taken down. I operate within a massively complex system of procrastination. So if I have a project to get done, I worry about it a great deal. I worry and I worry and I prepare and I over-prepare and then I prepare some more and I lay the ground and then I have a nap and then I have a drink and then I wait two days and I let it ferment and then, I, and then it's too late, you know, then it's like two minutes to midnight and I've got to get it done. Well, this is a complex psychological system designed to make you say the next day when you realize you haven't done your best job, that you could have done a better job if only you had time. That is classic procrastination syndrome, and I'm guilty of it. I'm sure many people in the world have had a worse time in life than I have, but speaking personally, I can tell you that, that suffering from depression is the lowest depths of, of despair. And yeah, I'm talking about clinical depression, something I've wrestled with for most of my adult life. Being depressed is not crying in your beer, you know, being depressed is not avoiding the issue or being self-indulgent. 
I used to liken the, the, the state to, uh, uh, it's like the Furies, you know, it's like um, um, flapping spiky bats around my head, preventing me from seeing or feeling anything clearly at all. It's an awful condition, um, which I'm happy to say that, that, that I've, I've dealt with and kept at bay to some extent. I think that adopting a motto or an invocation or a set of words to, li to live by can be a kind of a trap because however generous or well thought out they seem at the start, they end up uh, cramping your style. I've given myself one without any moral constraints at all. Uh, be good, be bad, but don't succumb to fads.